What's good? What's happening, guys? It's Sam, Mr. Blitz Tech, and welcome to one of my tech videos. Today, we're talking about my build. Some of you guys have just been asking me non stop, Sam, what does your computer you know, hold? What's the components? What did you get? What's your thought process for buying your machine? Yeah, I'll get to that, but make sure you're liking the video so I know that you guys like tech stuff making sure that you are sharing it to someone who might like tech stuff, who might like building PCs, and yeah, it just helps the channel. Give me a like, thumbs up, and let me know your build down below, what you got running, not in here, but on your machine. And without further ado, let's get into the build. I'm not going to go too deep into my build. I'm just going to go through some main components, which I think I feel using when it comes to your piece. First thing I usually go for is a processor. And for me, on my current build, is black. I've got a Ryzen 7 1700X. So the X on this thing just basically stands for it's unlocked. If I want to overclock it, it will do a mad thing and just boost the speed clock to probably four. Gigahertz. I actually just asked for a normal one, but it sent me an X. I will thank them man right there. You know who you are. Cheers. Yeah. Basically, this thing has eight cores, but when you look on the task manager, it has 16 logical processors. Crazy when it comes to like video editing, view intensive wise. This thing does the job. These things are mad. They're crazy. But it needs to upgrade though. 1700 is a bit, it's a bit late. Not gonna lie, but I'm looking for the new ones. The new ones look pretty nice. So, so after the CPU, what you want to be looking for is some kind of graphical power, whether you be just gaming or you don't want to be like bottlenecking your CPU. But you want a good enough EPU with your GPU. And what I've got is a 1660 Super Nvidia. Again, not the top of the line kind of GPU. At the same time, this does the job. I don't really play high intensive games, but it still does 1080 pretty well. 4K, not so much. It would cause me some kind of problems, especially in some high demanding games. But I did like Gigabyte one. It was in my price range. If you can afford 2060s, 2070s, or 2080s, or even the 380s and the 390, if you can go for those. But those ones are pretty sick, pretty expensive at the same time. But budget wise, this is not too bad. Gets the job done. Again, I'm not having no problems with my PC having this in my rig. All right, so once you find out what graphics card you want and what processor you want, kind of want, I don't know, a body for both your brain and your visuals kind of. So what you want for your brain and your visuals, you want a kind of body to house all of that. And I went for, this bad boy right here, the ASOS ROG Crosshair 567. I had to count that down, I actually forgot what number that was. Hero. This one's pretty good. It has everything I want in a motherboard. Lots for SSD or M2 SSD cards. It houses the AMD processor, as you can see. It's for Ryzen right there. It's a bit mad. But uh, yeah, this is a pretty good motherboard. Uh, it's got really, those are options in the BIOS as well. If you want to, again, overclock your processor this would suit you quite nicely and yeah i don't think i'll use this to its full capability but it's got everything i wanted throughout the box if i wanted to do any kind of madness it's all there and it's even got like color settings and stuff like that so if i want to like make my motherboard pulse i can see it right from here that's pulsing and all that kind of madness i'll do a little bit of recording so you guys can see that and yeah in fact no i won't do that because uh not very tidy in there actually all right, so once you've got your CPU down, your GPU down, and your motherboard where you want to house GPU and your GPU, you kind of want to know and think about the data you're going to be kind of compassing all your stuff on your day-to-day -day and what you're going to do, your installs, your games, whatever you're using your PC for. I'd highly recommend one of these. Yes, you're probably wondering, what the fudge is that? That is not a hard drive. How do you store space on that? Well. It's basically like a USB built for your PC nowadays. These are just a M2 card that slots right onto the motherboard and the read and write speeds of these things are so quick. 
your programs load up quicker, your operating system loads up quicker. It just does a lot more thinking way faster than your normal hard drive does. Way better. Not need to even think about what your hard drive is doing. That's more for storage now, but this thing right here, programs and booting up and everything else like this, I just can't recommend highly enough. Amazing, right there. Uh, apart from those niggly bits right there, also what I also got is 32 GB RAM, you know, because I just love to open up loads of windows, have loads of programs opened up at the same time, I like to, you know, web browse, do a lot of research, you know, and make sure that everything I need go in one place with all my multiple screens and stuff. I've only got to do anyway, but I've wanted more, that's also an option. So yeah, I think 32 gig RAM is good enough. I've never really taxed that out unless I'm using like something like After Effects. That's not too shabby. But I think that's a good sweet spot. Good sweet spot. I think 16 is not good enough for me anyway nowadays. I might be going for 64 on my next build. I don't know. I'm thinking about it. Anyway guys, let me know down below what your build is encompassing right now. Are you using it for 4K gaming? 4K home center, just for web browsing. What do you use your PC for? I want to know down below and your build, what kind of processes you got, what kind of graphics card you got. If you don't know, then maybe I can make another video about that. And yeah, I'm glad you guys came and tuned in. I'm Sam Mr. Blitzick, and I'll see you guys on the next level.